the story you sent me about um, the CVS in Columbia Heights. Now, this this rings of San Francisco, how they're closing everything, but this is in Washington State, is it? Washington, D.C., actually. Oh, okay. So the CVS in Columbia Heights is closing in February after problems with theft and empty shelves. Shoppers say the closure will be a blow to the neighborhood. So, you know, rampant crime in D.C., which is crazy because it is the nation's capital. And um, there's a video here of pe- people from the neighborhood, is it? Yeah, I think this was before they closed it down. They kind of like talked about the rampant crime and people and they were all making excuses for it. So you can see that guy and wokeness. He wrote uh, uh, just go, scroll up a little bit. He wrote a few months ago, Columbia Heights residents were asked about the rampant shoplifting at their CVS. Residents <laughs> sided with the looters. C- CVS just announced it's perm- permanently shutting down. So this is a clip of the news where they were essentially like making excuses for the people looting had to do at the same time they're probably doing it for a reason they mm. need those things but they shouldn't just be going in and clearing the shelves because this isn't sustainable for the store a lot of folks actually can't afford any of the things in there i'm not saying that ceiling has to be the solution to that right however i don't know maybe if the city could provide more accessible resources to unhoused or under under income folks that can provide them like hair care bodily care hygiene care etc that could be an option I'm stuck. I mean, it's bad to do at the same time. They're probably- yeah, okay. so, so it's like, you know, they both were like, ah, on one hand, like it's bad to steal. But on another hand, he's like, I'm not saying you should steal, but like, you know, it's kind of justified. And, and now they're losing the CVS. And I, I think that this is a huge, I would, I don't even know if I'd say metaphor. It's just like a huge reality of how life works. There's an old saying, you know, I always go back to old sayings because it's funny, no matter how many thousands of years they've been around, it still rings true don't bite the hand that feeds you and it's like that's supposed to be a metaphor but literally they're biting the hand that feeds them and the news is covering it i was reading some articles and they're like this is going to be a huge blow to an already a neighborhood who needs these things and it's like you have a pharmacy store that provides groceries in your neighborhood for things that you may or may not need and people are stealing and everyone in the neighborhood not everyone but a lot of people are making excuses for the theft and then you lose the store like that's basic economics in some of these neighborhoods especially in new york or inner cities it's it's like a war zone in order to try to keep a store alive like i've been to brooklyn i've been to the bad parts and it dude i would not i'd rather literally if you asked me do you want to run a store here for a year do you want to join the military i'd rather join the military i'm not even joking like it's i think it's safer to join the military than run a store in some of these bad areas like it's people don't realize how bad it is that's why they're closing so you know you can't expect everyone to want to give you stuff if they give you stuff and then you steal it and then run them out of town so i think self-accountability and self-awareness needs to be on that pie chart of, of why people are doing this stuff. Um, because yeah, I mean, that's going to happen all over the country. Like it already is. You're going to lose access to stuff. It's going to get crappier and the neighborhood's only going to get worse. I think this is quite simply downstream from the thinking of, you know, there are no wrong decisions. There are no bad points of view because, in these metro centers of New York, San Francisco, and Seattle is seen a lot of the businesses leave as well. The idea that it's not a person's fault for their own economic struggles, you know, I understand that because, you know, the government does suck to a very uh, large degree. But at some point, you have to say, you know, crime is not good. The decisions people are making are not good. And not everything can be provided for you. A lot of these places, you know, the, this liberal mindset of you know everything is is something there's a program that the government could come up with that would solve this this doesn't tend to work for most things and especially in terms of homelessness in california or in austin texas or you know in toronto ontario vancouver british columbia these programs have not worked and pouring money on the gasoline fire that is homelessness just has this it simply hasn't worked And they carry this attitude over with homeless people and it doesn't work and they carry it over to illegal immigration. And not only are you screwing the homeless people that are actually your own citizens that are there, you're now trying the same thing with illegal immigrants and saying we should provide them with any everything and anything they want. And that still doesn't work because there's no apparent end to it. You've got New York City where they have no room for them and they put people in high schools and send the children home. 
You've got Chicago where they put them in the airport and then they're trying to get people to... And some of the migrants are going home because it's too cold there and then they're trying to get rich people to bring in the migrants into their homes and they're saying, Texas, please stop sending them here because it's cold here. And then, of course, in California, they do the same thing. Free health care, housing. In Canada, you get money and housing right. for an entire family, like an income. They do all these things and they think it's going to put an end to it. But there's plenty of examples throughout history where giving people just just government handouts does not do them any good. And, and I do have sympathy for people that can't afford things because of how the economy is going. But there's also the idea that, you know, stealing's bad, and if everybody does it, then there's no product for anybody to buy. So should we just have this society where this anarchist society where everyone steals from everyone else and there's no rule of, of the land at all? I don't know if this is a planned dismantling of societal norms in these cities, but you would think of the nation's capital, they would have a little bit more belief in law, considering that's where laws are made and passed, but they don't seem to. I mean, you go back to the George Floyd Summer of Love in 2020, when they, they're burning down a church, they're burning down a secret service tower, they're trying to breach the White House grounds, and they say, oh, that's fine, but... Uh, a store being robbed, an entrepreneur business owner being robbed on the daily, just like in San Francisco where it's up to $950 or whatever. And they say, you know, um, just like the, the riots, insurance will cover that. Or, you know, it's okay if people steal a little bit because it's sustainable. It's like people go and steal from the self-checkout at Walmart. And like, can you complain if Walmart, you know, puts in a few more security apparatuses for, to prevent you from, from stealing? It's like at some point people in these cities and in these cultures think that it's almost their right to steal from other people because they're the have nots and the other ones are the haves. If that's a, the correct way to use that, it, it's not anyone's right to be able to steal from another person who's worked for it. But that's, the, that's the whole mentality of, you know, t redistribution of wealth and tax the rich. I, I, and I have yet to hear a person explain logically why a person has a right to these things. You know, I, I have a friend who's, I would say upper middle class. And he believes in this vague idea of taxing the rich. And I ask him, what's the, what's the justification where you get more of some person's money than somebody else's. And he tells me, well, you need to do it to sustain a society. And I keep asking, where's the justification where you just get inherently you deserve more of a person's money. And I think these are questions that these people in this video need to ask themselves. What is the justification where you just believe that you have the right to steal from somebody? Yeah. Well, it's also one of those things too, is like all these left wingers that want to do that. Right. I understand the concept, but they also hate the government, think the government's corrupt and they mm -hmm. don't like either party. So where does that money go? It goes literally to the government that can build a jet to waste all of Elon Musk's money, Jeff Bezos's money, <laughs> And then they could like lose the jet and they could literally lose the net worth of the top five people in, in the military industrial complex, which me and the left wing and the far left know is corrupt. Um, on that note, when it comes to D.C., where this is happening and where all this stuff is happening, these people are acting like those programs aren't in place. Like they're not in the middle of a MAGA rally. They're in Washington, D.C. You might not know this, Andrew, but I had to look it up to make sure. Uh, Joe Biden won Washington, D.C. 93% to 5.4 percent andrew he's won by almost 90 points it's so liberal in washington dc it makes uh you know it makes los angeles look like kentucky like it, it it's unreal <laughs> you know and that's not even a good example because kentucky can even go blue let's just say wyoming i think that's the reddest state it's i wouldn't live there if you paid me to live there i, I i'm disgusted by that city not only is it too weird and politically like operative like everyone seems like operatives there but it's like not nice it's homeless it's it got crime and it's way too liberal like at least la is like 60 30 or something you know it's not or 70 30 or 65 35 it's not 94 like that's it's it's unreal so in all of these places they're run by liberals they have more programs than most republican places why are people still stealing because it's not over that in los angeles they build a homeless shelter and crime and theft and uh, homelessness goes up around the homeless shelter. Why? Because they don't, they don't have that mommy, daddy, enforce the rules, be nice, but enforce the rules. They don't enforce rules. So if you say you can do this, that will provide you with hair care, as that guy said, and all these other stuff, 
but you got to come inside and act right. People go, nah, I'll just take all your stuff. Then I'll sleep outside and not act right. But you won't stop me from taking your stuff for free because I don't need to follow your rules if I want to sleep on the streets still. So they play these people and they use and abuse these people. Um, and it doesn't work. And in Washington and in you know Washington State as well, not just DC and Los Angeles, these are places with programs. Like, do you think that homelessness exists in LA because they have no place where you can go and buy hair care? Like, of course they do. They have more stuff. I think uh, San Francisco, you can like get a needle or something and shoot yourself up with heroin cleanly or whatever. Like the, the, the BART station is just filled with like degenerates and like crap all over the place. So their logic is so short-sighted and stupid. Like I would love, they seem like nice people, the, that guy and the chick. Like I would love to have a 10 minute conversation with them. Cause I, I just don't think that they've thought these things. And especially in that area, it's no surprise that they have never thought these things because 95% of the people in that area agree with them. Not 60%, not 70%. DC is the most liberal place in the country. And that's crazy considering it's supposed to be the capital of the United States founded on the constitution and American principles. It's a uh, quite a clown world out here. Yeah. I don't know where the complacency comes from. Maybe at, at 95%, you essentially think that this is the only form of government that can or ever have existed. But at what point do you start to think that the things we've been voting for and the things we've been so vehemently in favor of just aren't working like it's been a good while now in this era of you know hardcore division between the left and the right and you know say what you want about the right but i think it's more uh, much more evident that the liberal places are go are tanking much faster in terms of crime and homelessness and drug use and illegal immigration i don't think that's disputable at all so when you uh, I don't know where the mindset is when you're just like, yeah, but it's still better than the other side. It, it has to be, in my opinion, almost like a peer pressure th sort of thing. Like you'd rather uh, have the place around you crumble and just be silent about it than face the possible, you know, damning of you on social media or social outcasting when you go out to whatever bar and have people say, ew, oh my God, you, you're against uh, the rainbow sidewalk over there or the Black Lives Matter way painted on the street that cost $200,000. I know that's in DC. I know that costs a lot of money to keep to upkeep. They pay some far left organization to paint that every time. And it's like, oh, maybe, th maybe our priorities aren't straight. Well, it's definitely part peer pressure. And I think a lot of people like I, I talked to my one buddy who's like kind of liberal. This was years ago. It was raising a daughter kind of liberal, but like kind of got it. But you could tell like didn't want to fully get it because fully getting it would mean he got it. And then getting it would mean, you know, people would know he got it and he's afraid of the consequences. I got that exact vibe that you're talking about. But on another hand, I know their talking points and I know why they think these things. And I kind of understand, although I think they're co completely wrong, obviously. Like, look at the biggest economy in America is California. California has the biggest economy. So when you listen to Gavin Newsom, he'll say, you know, I have a bigger economy than most states. I mean, I'm bigger than most countries. And when you go to like Alabama and a lot of these red states, their economy is small and they have some of the most crime filled cities. But here's the trick. Of course, those cities are Democrat. And also, of course, those cities like the demographics of the crime are in a way where you're not allowed to talk about it or else they'll say you're racist. So, you know, it's kind of like hidden within like multiple political problems. And once you realize who the Republican Party is, you realize that they actually do suck and they actually are controlled opposition and they actually are phony. So it's like the left is fueled off their hate of the right. The right's fueled off their hate of the left. And they can't see through the political paradigms where I would say the idea of helping people is noble. But yeah, I agree with you at this point, despite like you can't let your emotion of like hating Trump or hating like Ted Cruz blind your vision of reality where like I actually am very annoyed by Ted Cruz and even Trump a lot of times or most times now I used to like him more. But that doesn't mean I'm going to be like, oh, that means liberalism is the way to run a city. It's not. They're failing miserably. And it's clear because they can't stop crime. They can't be honest about what's going on. And they just are so weak and pathetic and and have a backwards ideology. So I think that's the part that's hard for people to see through. One, it's absolutely peer pressure. Two, it's it's bad for your business if you go to business there as far as like the Googles, et cetera, like people will shun you. 
But at this point, you would think that like everybody kind of knows, but you know, the, the right is so annoying and fake that they kind of just tell themselves that like, this is the lesser of two evils. And in my view, that's the problem with having two evils is like both sides can justify why it's okay. And, you know, like, they'll be like, yeah, this is bad and we need to clean it up. And it's like, will you vote for a Republican? No, 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 no. You know, like, it's like, the, <laughs> it's like, okay. So yeah, it's going to have to be a Democrat running, pretend, pretend <laughs> to be a Democrat. That's really just conservative. Like that's the only way these people are going to pick it. Do you ever just wake up or sit there and think that how glad you are to not have to play like the game. Like sometimes I think about jobs I used to have, and this was pre what's called my political, you know, awakening. I can't imagine having to be like arguing with people about the pronouns in my email signature or like not being able to say that, like that, that girl looks a lot like a guy, <laughs> like stuff like that. You ever just think about how, how, lucky we are to not have to live like that i think about it oh yeah dude i mean i i would not have lasted my whole life like uh i would say I, my life is a gamble you know what i'm saying i rolled the dice and i i won so far i would say for the most part so like i don't know what i would have done outside of that i, I dude i was always getting like fired or yelled at like i can't act normal and i can't mm -hmm. act right and it's not that i'm a bad person but like i can't follow stupid orders and that, like you said, that was 2014. I was like a bad employee then. What would I be like now, bro? I might be homeless or, you know what I'm saying, on the Maury show. I don't know where I would have been, but I, I, there's no way I could have lasted two years at a corporation telling me I had to put make pronouns. I would be like, my pronoun is like, you know, so I would just make a joke out of it and then they'd probably, I'd be on the, the news for the wrong reasons. <laughs> You'd definitely be sent to like re-education stuff <laughs> justin trudeau re-education center which Bro. i'm sure is coming if he was to somehow be reelected. elected um, How, can i ask you this real quick because he's been there since 2015 it seems mm -hmm. like he's been there for 50 years uh how long can he be there forever yes technically wow. there's no term limit for the prime minister i believe well, the last election was what 2021 i think or three years every three years it's every four years okay. just like normal like normal places but an election can be called if other parties you know basically do a no confidence thing like if the, if enough seats you know uh outweigh if the majority of the people in the house of commons in the parliament want to call for an election they'll do that but the trudeau obviously doesn't want to do that because he knows he's going to lose this time finally and the other left-wing party doesn't want to do that because their leader knows that he's probably going to lose because he hasn't made any progress in the last three elections. In fact, he slid backwards, and they don't the want to let the guy? conservatives win. Pardon? The turban guy? <laughs> yes, Jagmeet Singh, the Jag rich Jag socialist. Yeah, Jagmeet, my rich, my my rich Sikh brother. You know, we're not Sikh out here. We're Sikh. I'm not <laughs> actually Sikh. I just, you know, I'm trying to fit in. I'm at like a Sikh That's party. Right. Like, you, know, you, one of us. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, no, no, no. Actually, no. Sorry, I was just caught up in the music but who's gonna win the next election if justin trudeau is not gonna win and, and what has he won three times and he's gonna lose this time you think yeah um big pierre is gonna win um pierre? and pierre polyev is the leader of the conservative party and uh he's got a gigantic lead and if they get a majority um then they have no excuse for to be able to pass anything they want here's the deal with them he looks like a nice Canadian guy. He looks very Canadian. Well, no. he's. I have a problem with him using style. He's used multiple stylists that have told him, you know, stop wearing suits and stop wearing glasses. And now you need to, you know, work out and wear makeup. Um, so I can't really respect that. The thing about the Conservative Party in Canada is picture like your biggest set of Republican, like blowhards and nerds that would be in like sweater vests and stuff. And they hate jocks and they they think that, uh, you know, P Twitter's too mean. It's full of hate speech. That's like the Conservative Party of Canada, <laughs> like the nerdiest, loseriest parts of the Republican Party. And yeah, they're, they'll be better than Trudeau. Gas prices will come down. The housing market will come down. But they're they're not willing to say the things that need to be said. They're not willing to talk bad about 
absurd like mass migration they're not willing to say that you know a man cannot be a woman so it's that sort of stuff like the hope i think is that they get into office and they can sort of be bullied into doing the right thing into being men because as it stands there they have a projection to have a massive win and they just don't want to screw that up by being too mean you know right i'm gonna ask you two questions one compare him to like an american politician like like as far as like ethically and like like mindset wise pierre Who's he like? He is like, I don't know, like um, just anyone who's not who's who's kind of afraid. He's he's better than Jeb Bush. He's <laughs> I don't know. It's hard like because McConnell? pardon. Like, is he like a Mitch McConnell? Like he does Republican he's, things and conservative things. He's just kind of like a whatever. No, he's halfway in between, you know, like what you would, might consider like a, a real Republican and an establishment Republican. It's it's hard to put a name on that. I'm not I'm not sure. Maybe like um, not even a maybe like a Ted Cruz. I got you. It's not not bad, but not good. Um, <laughs> my other question is because I know when I watch the UFC, they're saying F Trudeau. Like the, mm -hmm. the UFC crowd is always right wing. Um, but when it comes to like Canada. Do you think because they are supposed to represent the people and, and that's kind of at literally their job um, that the people are that way? So they act that way because that is the majority of people. Or do you think a majority of the people are tired of like the safe space nanny culture and the politicians are just afraid to rub people the wrong way? Because it does seem like Canadians are like extraordinarily nice and like, you know, that there's more people that agree with that maybe there. There, that's something that people, I think, had to come to terms with through Trudeau W number three. Like that, hey, everybody says he's the worst guy in the world, yet he gets reelected again. It, it's In the same way the U.S. has the swing states, there are certain pockets of Canada that they have to try to win. Now, Justin Trudeau is supported by the majority of senior citizens who liked his father, who was just as bad as him. It was just the 70s, and they didn't know any better, and the effects weren't as dire and as immediate as they are today so on the east coast where you know white people go to retire they're big justin trudeau fans because they see the liberal party and they're like you know the old classical liberal trope that's what they still are and he's just doing the best he can with you know the pandemic and everything then you have the toronto area the big cities which are still very liberal they'll vote for him and then you've got the offshoots of far left people and green party people then you've got the Midwest and the countryside that all votes conservative. So it has shifted. You know, people kind of have had enough. After around somewhere around seven to ten years of a Canadian prime minister, they eventually get voted out. You know, the one before him was conservative and pretty hardcore conservative. Establishment, yes, like he's a big Israel guy. He would he would be a big Ukraine guy. But still like almost like a George Bush type, he was in for eleven years and Canada was a more liberal country back then. Um, then I think the, the most conservative people are now, I think back then people weren't paying as much attention to politics, but then you got the French who sort of just do their own thing. So they, in the last couple of elections have just voted for the French party because they don't really care what happens to the rest of the party. Cause they're kind of like, uh, they're Scotland. They're a little bit more left wing, but they care about their culture a lot. And, um, you know, people do have to come to the reality that there are a lot of people just like in Democrat led cities in the U S that like this they care about the the alphabet stances and they care about the rainbow roads shout out mario kart and these are things that are important to them and there's a lot of those people so they people kind of had to come to that conclusion in the last election but i do think it's shifted more to the right as people see the failures and a lot of it has to do with you know the economy because the economy is poor right now and the housing it's impossible to buy a house right now if you're anywhere close to a major city and that's directly Trudeau's fault and when you when you let last thing when you have a person in for so long it's very easy to attribute all the bad things in the country to them because it's been under their watch for almost a decade right he can't be like oh well, you did it five years ago it's like yo you've been there for 15 yeah, years exactly. or 10 years um with that what you're saying is interesting because with america you know, this is my issue with our politics. And I, I would assume that your politics are less divisive. I mean, I've watched some of the debates and although you guys have different views, I think that like 
people know that these other people exist. Like I'm sure that conservative, maybe I'm wrong, but like conservatives in Canada know that there's way too many liberals in Canada, right? Like they know, they know that they're there and they might not agree with it, but in America with Trump, like Trump has been the center of, of the America. And I'm sure Trump is a huge part of Canadian politics too, just like as a vocal point of conservative people. But I feel like what I've seen in circles of Republicanism is people like literally think that at this point that everyone's like them. And that's what's making me nervous for the 2024 election. Like this guy knows everyone's not like uh, the right wingers, you know, like in order to win, I got to play it this way. And I would never cave my values, but there is a way to be likable without caving your values. And I feel like our party kind of does like it's becoming very Trump, very Marjorie Taylor Greene, very Carrie Lake, you know, and it's like that's not popular. It's it's not like I could talk to someone liberal. There's a chance they hate me and there's nothing I could do about it. But like I've had decent conversations where if you can like throw them a bone and just like treat them like people and be like, I, you know, I get what you're saying there. Like I get the idea of it. I get this and I understand that. But, you know, I think this would be better. That's a lot different than like, screw you, libtard, like go home, you're stupid. But like that, that's funny on Twitter, but it doesn't work in an election. So that's what makes me nervous is I think it seems like this Pierre guy, not to make excuses for some of his establishment stuff, but it seems like he understands the, you know, the landscape of politics. And uh, it, it feels like, although, of course, Trump could beat Biden because it's like they're both old, Biden sucks, and there are a lot of people that disagree with them. This country, like every city is liberal. You know what I'm saying? Every, every city is Democrat in America. There's a reason. The people there vote Democrat. Like they're not us. They're not you. They're not Trump. But everybody in the right, they, they feel like they don't have to at all tailor their personality or tailor. And it's not even tailor their personality. Like just be likable. Be like, have a good personality. Like they, they, they basically just like fundraise and milk their base with like extreme like rhetoric but they don't act on the rhetoric and then also they don't get any other people. So it's like the worst of both worlds. They'll push this like crazy, like, you know, minority rhetoric and not do it. And then, you know, kind of turn themselves off to people that probably would agree with them if, if they communicated it. Right. So that like this country's kind of like scrambled over the last 10 years, people have gone nuts. Is it like that there? Or do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. I do think people still think, that everyone, you know, hates Trudeau. They thought that before the last two elections because the people they talked to, and the people will say that, but there are just so many people in the big cities and there's so many ridings in these around these cities that people will still vote for it because conservative equals bad, no matter who it is, and especially with young people. You know, in Canada, only for a young person the media you're getting is us media your, your social media and it's changed a bit in the last few years with some social accounts but the the media you're getting is still the late night talk shows whatever snapchat and instagram are pushing so you're just like yeah i'm a pretty much a democrat and justin trudeau is the closest thing to that so they still vote for him though the idea in canada is that you don't need to do really anything and it should be all right. You know, up until a couple years ago, you just go to college, you do whatever. And generally there was a job waiting for you on the other side. And like you didn't, and it didn't really matter if you had conservative opinions or liberal opinions. But now people are seeing that everything runs downhill from the economy. You know, the houses are unaffordable, so you can't move into it. The inflation has gone up so high, your grocery bills doubled, so you can't save for something else. And now people are finally starting to notice like what causes that. Whereas before, the economy wasn't bad enough for people to actually have to think about their political choices. So all through my life, anybody who's, you know, under 30 was just like, you know, thinking anything that comes out of leftist media is cool. And there's no counterculture to that. And by extension, they basically want to be you know, a cool Democrat. And that's how most people I know live their lives up until 2016. Right. And a lot. And, and you go walking downtown in the streets of Toronto. You could go in downtown Toronto, start a fire in the middle of the street, set step into that fire, pull six other people into the fire. Now you've got a gr crowd of people on fire and nobody's going to stop and do anything. They might record it. But just like New York, the complacency of the mind 
combined with mass migration just equals a fractured society. And when I talk to students at universities doing streets or something, they just say everybody they know has their heads down. So they, they're hoping to come to a university to get some sort of community sense. This is what like a dozen people told me on the University of Toronto campus. And they're just like, nobody cares. Nobody cares about anything. There's no clubs. You know, I see people playing ultimate Frisbee. <laughs> That's about it. There's no sense of anything. People don't want to be part of anything. They just want to be on their phone and their phone tells them, hey, got to be liberal, I guess. Dude, a, a lot of things I want to say about that. Really, really good points. Like where you're saying, hey, everyone hates Trudeau. Like I saw that the last election. I paid attention to your elections. Uh, I, I gave you guys, you know, my energy. Um, and it's like, say you found a liberal and a Democrat or whatever you call them out there. And it's like, hey, you do like Trudeau? No, he's corrupt, right? You heard the corruption scandal? Yeah, yeah. Would you would, would you rather stand there or stand next to this guy in a MAGA hat? They're like, oh, stand next to Trudeau. You know, so like that's the dynamic of it. And it's the same thing in, in the cities where it's like, you know, they know that all this crime is happening, but it's just like this I, the idea. They just don't believe that a Republican would fix it. And they just believe that Republicans are so bad that they just don't want to be near them. So they just like that's their lesser of two evils. And um with the kids and stuff, I'm I'm not saying conservatives are perfect, and I probably bash republicanism too much on my show, considering it is most Republicans. And but people get why I'm trying to be self aware. Um, the liberal kids, like I think a lot of it does stem from depression. I'm not saying conservative kids are happy and liberal kids are depressed, but like a lot of it is this like beating down on your race, beating down on how you grew up, beating down on your parents, beating down on your ethnicity, beating down on your country. So they're just like depressed. They don't want to organize. They don't want to, you know, be in groups. They don't want to do anything. And I noticed that they're just like sucking the confidence and self-esteem out of these kids and just sucking it out. So a lot of these kids, it's not even like they have opinions because they're just afraid to even have an opinion. You know, I know like I have some family members that are uh, in their 20s and like I'll hang out with the friends and stuff and they're cool and they get it. But like the one one of my family members, friends, um, they lived in San Francisco. They worked for one of these big tech companies. Right. And they moved out and I had a conversation with them and it was like they could identify that the D.A. is crazy they could identify that there's too much crime, right? They could identify that they needed to get out of there because it was like getting dangerous. But I didn't really ask them. But it's like, would they vote for a Republican? Maybe. But also maybe not. You know, I'm not I didn't really get to that point of like I, w I was wondering. But it's like that's the sort of thing where you see all these issues. But just culturally, like a lot of the left wing isms that they're posting on the kids is like this like soul sucking mindset. So then it's like, who are you? Like, uh, uh, you know, like, like, what do you like? Uh, what, what, like, you know, you pick something that you like, like that, you know, is not going to like freak too mm -hmm. many people out. And then you listen to people and surround yourself by people that are just like weak and, you know, beta ish. So I'm not shy. Like I would guess that depression among liberals, it has to be at least over 50%. Because I think the second it's kind of like working out, you know, like I, they say more people who work out are right wing. It's because working out is the ultimate self care. And it's like the body God gave you getting it stronger. It doesn't mean everybody like fit is right wing and everybody not fit. That's not what I'm saying. But like they, they, they keep making these points because it's like, if you start caring about yourself a lot, of, it's like when I started caring about myself, I didn't in my early 20s and I hung out with bad people and stupid people. And then once I started taking care of myself, you start weeding out your friends like, oh, that's some guy I shouldn't probably hang around. It's the same thing with mentally and politically and stuff. So, you know, a lot of that going on for sure. Yeah, I don't I've never understood the mindset mindset of I hate the government. The government totally sucks. But let's like at the same time, who's your government that's doing all these things that you don't like? Like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like right. the like I, I'm going to keep electing Democrats. But at, and, you know, I hate the establishment, but I but the establishment's actually the one that I'm supporting through all these policies that I'm supposedly so supportive of. It doesn't make any sense. Well, I, I would say this real quick too. Sorry. Mm -hmm. it's like, this is why nobody likes the right in America also. Cause like, dude, honestly, the Republican party pisses me off more than the Democrat party now where it's like, they'll say corporations are liberal and woke. And then they do corporate tax cuts. They'll say corporations are terrible. And then they'll make sure like a company is in the hands of liberals. So it's in the hands of the United States. You know, they'll, 
they'll say government's corrupt and then they'll like trump says he wants to build a new building for the fbi while his supporters are rotting in jail and then he builds a new branch of government that didn't exist before so it's like i think both sides see the stupidity in each other like you talk to a liberal and they'll be like yeah but you say corporations are all left-wing and woke and you keep giving them money and power and then you you hate the government but you want to give them money and then you have both of these entities are pretty much just one, like laughing hysterically at people. If there was common sense and self-reflection among both sides to kind of weave through the government versus corporate like uh, thought process, we could have success. But I think 97% of people will not do that. So it'll never, you know, change. Turn it up, Jordan.